as we finish the year 2020, we are seeing more and more people migrate from the Western coastal states. And in this video, we're going to talk specifically about people from the San Diego County moving to the greater Phoenix area. And what does that look like? What does that feel like? What is the cost differences? What's the lifestyle differences? We'll make sure we're going to cover absolutely everything in this video. You do not want to miss it. If you're even thinking about moving to the greater Phoenix area, stay tuned. <music> What's up, everybody? This is Cheryl Willis over at the Real Agent Now Group right here in Phoenix, Arizona. And if this is your first time to this channel and you want to learn everything about what it's like to work, eat, sleep, live, play, and the costs when moving from San Diego to Phoenix, make sure you tap that little subscribe button and you click that little bell so you are notified each and every time we release a new video. We are literally getting dozens of phone calls, emails, text messages every single day from people moving and relocating here, and we absolutely love it. If you're even thinking about moving or relocating anywhere to the Phoenix area, make sure you give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email, days, nights, weekends, we got your back when moving to Phoenix, Arizona. Okay, guys, we're going to take a close look and we're going to pick this apart between San Diego County and the greater Phoenix area, which is Maricopa County. San Diego County has 1.4 million people. Phoenix has 1.6 million people. So we're talking kind of even playing fields, but here's where the big difference is the overall cost of living, and we're going to compare this on a national level. So national level, and if you go to bestplaces.net, they use 100 as kind of that middle point. That's the national average. Below 100 means it's cheaper than the U.S. average. If it's over 100, it's more expensive than the national average. So the cost of living index for San Diego County comes in at 160.1, whereas Greater Phoenix area comes in at 103.7. Very significant. That is a 35% less expense <laughs> to live in the greater Phoenix area. Let's break that down a little bit more so you better understand where those numbers come from. First of all, we have one of the most important things that we obviously use and enjoy every single day, and that's food and groceries. San Diego came in at 109.7. Phoenix came in at 97.3. There is a huge shop local movement, if you would, in the greater Phoenix area. So we like to provide our own literally farm to table food, and you are going to find that freshness and save a lot here in the greater Phoenix area. Okay, the next big one, and this is something that, again, you're gonna be living with day in and day out, and this is utilities. Utilities actually comes in right pretty much even between San Diego and the greater Phoenix area. San Diego, again, at 102.8, and the greater Phoenix area at 101.8. So they're pretty close. Our electricity per wattage is maybe a tad bit less, and we do use a lot of solar energy here in the greater Phoenix area. So you're going to save a little bit on that electricity side, but on the gas side, natural gas, it's a little bit more expensive. That's why you'll also find fewer homes with the gas cooktop stoves. But if that's important to you, that's something we can definitely head down for you. Or in a new build community, find one of the communities that are providing that gas service to the new homes. But again, that's just for electricity and gas. There's a lot of things you can do with the amazing sunshine that we do have here. Like I said, install solar panels. That's a really big thing. I know that's really big in California as well. But we also have things, different types of roofs and insulation. You can also tint windows or put sunscreens that actually not only prevent UV um, from entering into your home, but also the heat. So there's a lot of things you can do to help curb that spending. One of the things you're not going to be able to do, and that's going to be changing your water, sewer, and garbage. And although this is not on the website, I do know for a fact that the water and sewer and garbage, even with a pool in the greater Phoenix area, is going to be less money than any of the coastal cities. And I think that that has a lot to do with the disposal and the um, extra precautions that are necessary because you are along our wonderful ocean and you need to preserve that, that cleanliness. So, um, so you're going to save a little money there. And again, even on the electricity and the gas, Arizona is just a tad bit less. Now, 
on to our next one. This is really important for any working family, and that's transportation. Now, I, again, you know, they're pretty darn close. San Diego came in at 120, and the greater Phoenix area came in at 117.9, so just shy of 118. And I really think that it has a lot to do with, we don't have a lot of mass transportation. Neither of these counties are walkable. You can't walk everywhere. You're going to be getting in your own car, and you don't have the mass transportation like you do, like in the big, big cities like Los Angeles, San Francisco, New York City, etc. Now, the greater Phoenix area is currently working actually on a $1.4 billion improvement on our South Central light rail project. They've been working on it for about 10 years, and it's just something that, you know, you have to take extensions and different legs in different phases, not all at once, otherwise it tears the whole city apart, right? So you're going to see some improvement there in the greater Phoenix area. The commute time is pretty similar also. San Diego is 24 minutes, and the greater Phoenix area is 25 minutes, which I don't understand because I'll be honest with you, the greater Phoenix area being the sixth largest metropolitan area in the entire nation is not even listed in the top 30 for being uh, bad traffic. We have such a great infrastructure here and it just continues to grow as our community grows. Our freeway system is on a loop system. We've already now started to create that second loop system. And in the next 10 to 20 years, we're gonna see that third loop that actually expands out into bigger part of the state. We have a new interstate that's going to be coming up from the south through Tucson, through the west side, and it's going to go straight up to uh, Hoover Dam and Nevada. Once that, again, more freeway systems, that's what keeps people in motion. Then we also have the SR30 um, West Valley Freeway Extension. If those are For those of you who are thinking about maybe buying in the West Valley, you're going to have a lot more accessibility to Central and East Valley in just a matter of a few short years. So it's not going to be very long. Again, I, I'm originally from California, and I remember them talking about adding a freeway system, and it took about 30 years. <laughs> Here in the greater Phoenix area, when they say they're putting something in on the freeway system, they do. It's been fantastic seeing everything grow again with our population. We've seen a huge amount of people migrate here over the last many years. It just hasn't been over the last couple of years or more specifically here in 2020. We've been the um, fastest growing county in America three years running and our home builders can't even um, keep up with it. There's so much in the pipeline. If you ask me, it's such a new city, a new community, and there is so so many new communities and projects and subdivisions and housing coming up down the pipeline. It is just incredible and a phenomenal time to get in our market. And the really neat thing on the surface streets, we are on a grid system. So we have every mile, north, south, and east, west, we are on a grid system. So what that does to keep the, the, the traffic flowing is that instead of just only having one or two roads that head directly north or directly east, whichever direction you're going, um, you have a multiple of choices. And so when you diversify traffic like that, it just kind of keeps it a lighter um, weight on all of the streets. We also have AI technology on our hard corners, which is pretty cool. It actually changes as the flow and the volume of the traffic changes at different times of the day. So during the heavier time, it's going to keep traffic moving along nicely. It also prevents fewer accidents. It also reduces emissions in our air. Okay. I think we would all now agree that for the most part, it's pretty much the same between San Diego County and Maricopa County. Like it's so close, it's not gonna make or break your decision, right? But here is the big difference. Let's talk about that elephant in the room, the big elephant in the room, and that is housing costs. Whoa. All right. Let's first look at, again, the national average is right at 100, right? The greater Phoenix area comes in at 103. So we're just a tad over the national average. And by the way, it is still in the affordability range, even in a better position than a national average. But let's get to the point. And what is San Diego? Are you ready for this? <laughs> 279. That is almost 
three times the national average. Think about it. You are spending 300% of what the normal family might on a national level. That's insane. You are working to live. Gosh, how much freedom would you have if you could enjoy life with some of that extra time and money? Because if you're not working as hard to make as much money so that you can afford the housing that's triple everywhere, not everywhere else, but triple the Phoenix area, think about how much time and money and less stress you would have living in an area like the greater Phoenix area. And here's the best part. It's not just one part of Phoenix or maybe five parts of Phoenix. It's not inside or outside. I am telling you, there is affordable housing in every single city. If $400,000 is your price point, you can buy a home in any city, even Scottsdale, even Paradise Valley, some of our highest valued homes. If you are in the multi-millions, you can also buy in every single city like Phoenix, even Queen Creek. There are so many options in every single city. There's new homes, there's old homes, there's rehabbed homes, there's updated homes, there's do-it-yourself homes, it's endless. And it's such a great opportunity for young professionals, um, young families, if you wanna live in a close proximity to a walking district, uh, maybe for coffee shops and ease of entertainment and restaurants, or if you wanna live further out, um, maybe something more exclusive, maybe in a gated community or in a luxury, or maybe you wanna be in the desert, maybe you don't wanna see any desert. There is a variety of housing throughout the greater Phoenix area, and it is expanding at an exponential amount of numbers. It is insane how large this city is going to be in just a matter of 10, 15 years. And believe you me, raising a family and owning a home, that's like nothing, right? And again, if you don't need to be right in that main corridor, the hub, Central Phoenix, if you would, where all the freeway systems are, then you can buy in one of the suburban areas, a slower pace of living. There is still freeway access. There's the surface streets we talked about. There's parks, there's entertainment. Again, not everything in our county is downtown. Everything is kind of shared <laughs> throughout the valley. Let's talk about some of the other things when you're comparing um, San Diego to Phoenix. All right, number one, job growth. The USA is looking at a 33.5% future job growth. San Diego is at 349 So they're pretty consistent with what the average is. Phoenix is at 48.2%. It is incredible the amount of companies that are relocating here or starting here in the greater Phoenix area and the job opportunities that you will be afforded living in the greater Phoenix area are obviously exponentially greater than in the San Diego area. If you have a young family and you are thinking about education, schools are also right at about the same, depending on which website you go to and also depending on which part of town, San Diego versus Phoenix, you're gonna find inconsistencies or consistencies all over the greater Phoenix area. So if education is really important to you, just let us know. Again, we wanna make sure that we match your needs and your wants with the right area, the right schools, um, everything that works for your lifestyle and what your future looks like. So for instance, on the younger kids, um, pupil teacher ratio in San Diego is 23.6. I know that's tough on you teachers. And by the way, thank you for everything you do. Here in the Phoenix area, only 18.6. That's a big difference. That's five students, which can be, like I said, a big difference for your student in that classroom. So lifestyle, first of all, if you miss your family and your friends or that beach in San Diego, you're only a six hour drive away from San Diego. But if it's just a beach you need, it's only five hours. I happen to know because I take my dog there to the beach every summer. Thank you very much, California. And if you want to fly on out there, it's a one hour flight and we don't change our clocks. Big win, guys. <laughs> So half of the year, we're on the same time zone as you. So when we fly out, it's only an hour flight. And then the other time of the year when you guys change the clocks and we don't. So thankfully, you never sleep in and miss work. You actually leave at 12 noon and you land at 12 noon. Let's talk about the lifestyle that you are going to enjoy here in the greater Phoenix area. Some of my favorites are the beautiful mountains that we have here, not only located in the Phoenix area, 
But people don't believe this. We're not just desert. We actually have mountains. We actually have trees. We actually have places with snow. So if you like to hike or go off-roading, either yourself on Jeep tours, dirt biking or mountain biking, if you want white rotter rafting, there is all kinds of woods type activities as well as local trails and um, even mountain climbing. There's all kinds of stuff, right? If you are the socialite and you like to get out and do things, first of all, we have clear blue skies, actually more than you do, over 300 per year. Yes, it is a little warm for maybe two months out of the year, maybe three. And you know what? That would be a perfect time to pop on back out to California and visit all your friends and say hi. But let me tell you, the other nine, 10 months out of the year, we have art and wine festivals. We have culinary festivals. We have music festivals. We have hot air balloon festivals. We have a renaissance festival. We have taco festivals, pizza festivals. I am. We have macaroni and cheese festivals. We have every kind of festival you can possibly think of. Let me tell you, we have rodeos. We have running races. We have parades. We have holidays. We have so many parade of lights and things going on over the holidays. It is insane. Now let's not talk about the big events here in the greater Phoenix area. We're talking about the Cactus League spring training. We get 12 teams. Yes, that's 12 teams that come here throughout the greater Phoenix area. That's usually the end of February until the very beginning of April. And there are baseball games and fans everywhere. And it is so much fun. You got to catch one. Actually, you know what? The cheap seats out in the bleachers are the best. Um, and again, the, you can pick your favorite or you can just go to one and have a good time. It is so much fun. We also have the Barrett Jackson. If you are a car enthusiast, we have the big event in the January timeframe, but there's also a couple of other ones throughout the course of the year. We just had one a couple of weeks ago. Oh, and if you are a NASCAR fan, ah, let me tell you, we got two huge NASCAR races too. March and November every year, we have the Waste Management Open, which by the way, we have 400 golf courses Yes, I really said that 400. It is insane. So if you're a golfer, there's lots to play on. If you like watching golf, there's nothing better than the Waste Management Open. Let's not forget about the Fiesta Bowl or all our pro sports here in the Phoenix area. We have the Phoenix Suns. We have the Coyotes. We have the Cardinals. We have the Diamondbacks. We even have the Double A teams. We have the, I, I, it just goes on and on and on. There is so much to do here. And let me tell you, it's getting even more. We have some of the most amazing water parks here. And like I said, it's getting crazier with the population that's exploding here. They just keep filling in not only the housing, but what are we going to do to keep people entertained, especially the families? We have what will be the world's largest privately owned sports park opening here in the Mesa area. It's already started. They're on their phase one. There's three different phases. And this is the Legacy Sports Park. This is in Mesa. The entire community, it's called East Mark, and it is incredible and it's affordable. It has soccer fields and tennis fields and football fields and volleyball fields. It has indoor, outdoor concert venue area events for festivals and concerts. This is going to be a major tourism area, also right by Mesa um, Gateway Airport that is now already doing some small flights that make it even easier so you don't have to worry about the Phoenix International Airport. But again, did I say international? Mm, yes, that's right. I did say Phoenix International. I'm telling you, you're not going to want for nothing here. We also have the Oasis Water Park in Tempe. That is eight-story slide. Yeah, eight-story slide. You don't want to miss that. We also have the Strand in Gilbert that's going to be opening up here in just a couple of years. They've been working on this already. They've already got their phase one done. This is a cable-based wakeboarding, skiing, and kneeboarding lake. They're going to have an uh, inflatable water park with a surf lagoon and the sand beach. So there's your sand if you need some sand. It's going to be 25 acres. There's going to be kayaking, canoeing, and paddleboarding. So you're not going to miss out on any water. Did I mention that? Make sure you bring your sunscreen, but then you guys know that already. We also have the Great Wolf Lodge. Oh my gosh, have you checked this out online? It's in Scottsdale. It's 85,000 square feet 
indoor water park. So it's climate controlled all year long at a beautiful 84 degrees. We also have like really this list keeps going on. The greater Phoenix area is also home to Six Flags Hurricane Harbor in Glendale. Well, they say it's in Phoenix, but it's in Glendale. And it is so much fun for the kids. And are you ready for this? <sighs> There's another one coming to Glendale. I'm telling you, Glendale has some serious entertainment, if that's kind of your thing. We have Crystal Lagoons um, opening up in 2023. That is an 11-acre water park. And the Island Resort. What do we have as far as like new developments? We have the Douglas Ranch Master Plan. That's going to be right outside of Buckeye, which is on the way in from California. You're going to want to stay tuned to that. That is desert right now, but it is going to be a whole city. Um, this same developer created Maricopa a little over um, 20 years ago. And so they have proven success and we are expecting a lot from that $8 billion development. We also have Phoenix Biomedical Campus coming in. We have the Novus Innovation Campus. We also have a Tessa Motorsports Center coming in. These are all billion dollar companies opening up huge commercial buildings and facilities and locations. We have data centers that are opening all over the greater Phoenix area. We have Google, we have Microsoft, Cirrus One and Mesa. We have Intel opening up another fab. We have the Lucid Motor Factory. You wanna talk about job growth? It's already slated. Get here either with a job or there's one waiting for you because there is a lot of opportunity here in the greater Phoenix area. Phoenix is super proud to be so pro-business, and that's what attracts a lot of these businesses here to the greater Phoenix area, whether they are existing and relocating or starting a new business. They limit regulations, and they we, Arizona, does not have a corporate franchise tax. There is an array of tax credits and incentives throughout the state for startups, or businesses moving and headquartered here in the greater Phoenix area. All right, so personal income taxes, very different in the, from the state of California to the state of Arizona. So first of all, the current state income tax is 8.0 for the state of California. And for Arizona, it is 3.4. Now, in November 2020, we did just pass an initiative, Proposition 208, to help fund the schools that will increase taxes for a select group of individuals. And let me break that down for you. If you are an individual making over $250,000, or if you are a um, married couple filing joint, and it's $500,000, then the amount of income over those thresholds, 250 and 500, will be an additional tax of 3.5. Now, that doesn't make it 6.9 for all of your income. It's just for the income above those thresholds. So it is a little complex, but um, it is still, no matter how you look at it, less than the state of California. So another big plus. So the only way we are going to be able to help you find the perfect spot for your family and your future is you got to pick up that phone. You got to give us a call, send us a text message or shoot us an email. We are here days, nights and weekends. We can't wait to help you relocate here to the Phoenix area. And until our next video, we'll catch y'all later.